Marvel's next major theatrical release is set to star Paul Rudd when he returns as Ant-Man in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. This is the first time we'll be learning more about what Scott Lang's been up to since we last saw him in Avengers Endgame. Like any Marvel movie, details about the movie's plot have been kept under wraps, but some major details may have leaked out, so let's find out what those spoilers may be. Firstly, the news report spoils a major moment in Quantumania. The first Ant-Man released in 2015 marked the beginning of the Marvel Studios sub-franchise that director Peyton Reed is about to wrap up. Team Ant-Man has experienced a lot since then, including playing a crucial part in the downfall of Thanos in Avengers Endgame, but this time as they battle Kang the Conqueror in the Quantum Realm, Ant-Man, Wasp, Hank Pym, Janet Van Dyne, and Cassie Lang will be off on their own adventure. Ant-Man and his family will go off exploring the Quantum Realm, only to learn that it is controlled by none other than Kang. Although the villain will be encountered and perhaps a deal will be reached, based on prior footage, many fans doubted that Rudd Scott Lang would would be able to survive. In fact, early rumors suggested that Rudd would die at the conclusion of Ant-Man 3, and when the trailer was released, fans started to believe the theory even more. For the Avengers, killing Ant-Man would send a powerful message that if Scott Lang could perish, then everyone else is fair game too. But all of this worry seems to have been useless. Showbiz lawyer Deborah Klein was mentioned in a report which further stated that Paul Rudd was set to appear in more Ant-Man and Avengers movies. If the report is correct, Ant-Man's future seems pretty solid. While killing off Ant-Man would have been a good shock to all fans, it looks like the movie will avoid killing off one of its main superheroes at this stage. Let's learn what Kang had to say about the rumor. During his appearance on Jimmy Kimmel, actor Jonathan Majors was questioned about his latest appearance in Marvel. For starters, he stated that he is indeed portraying the supervillain Kang the Conqueror, and that playing a villain is more enjoyable than playing a hero. He also agreed that villains leave a much more lasting impression than most heroes do. Majors claimed to have traveled from London, where he was shooting the upcoming Ant-Man movie, and when Kimmel asked him to confirm whether he would be a villain on the Order of Thanos, he responded simply with, True, the talk show has argued that Paul Rudd's Ant-Man would probably be killed by a foe as powerful as Thanos. Once again, he replied that everyone should wait and see, and added that he's read the full script. He then punched his hand to demonstrate how one may shatter the miniature-sized hero, which seems easy enough for him. Kimmel then asked Majors if he had ever talked to someone about how important it is to avoid disclosing spoilers in public, the actor confirmed that it was much worse than that. There's no discussion about what can or can't be said, all they need to remember is not to say anything ever. Sounds like Marvel's continuing to keep its secrets close as always. Up next, what does Marvel have planned? Kang's role in the MCU must change as Marvel continues to advance in the multiverse saga. Somehow Marvel has to show that their newest villain poses a serious threat to the multiverse if they want to top what they did with Josh Brolin's Thanos. It won't be easy, but they have to try. Majors is relentlessly being questioned about the newest big bad that Marvel is intent on following and how he feels about following Thanos' act. The actor understands that everyone wants to compare, but at the end of the day, they're very different. He explained that they're two separate worlds, so while fans will want to compare how this villain will work against the Avengers and how big a threat he'll pose, Majors will keep silent. He wants the movie to do the talking, and if you ask us, that sounds fair. But fans should be excited because from that little... But fans should be excited because from the little that we all saw in Loki, Kang seems to be an exciting new character who we'll only learn more about gradually. The writer behind Loki, Michael Waldron, thinks that Majors is a wonderful actor and brings a completely different energy than Josh Brolin's. Instead of opting for the brutish strength that Thanos seemed to like portraying, Kang is meant to be more monk-like in his aspirations. He Who Remains is an intriguing new addition to the MCU, but fans will need to be patient. Following up, could Loki have already spoiled Quantumania's ending? Well, 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 it looks like the unexpected twist in the Loki finale may have revealed the ending to Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, two years prior to the film's debut. The multiverse saga's main narrative is meant to be driven by Jonathan Major's Kang the Conqueror. In Loki, we were introduced to He Who Remains, the benevolent version of Kang, whose demise paved the way for Kang's ascent to power. But if Kang was revealed to have seized control of the TVA when Loki and Sylvia were present at the Citadel at the end of time, Kang's destiny in Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, appears to be quite simple. Scott Lang and the Ant-Man family visit the Quantum Realm in Quantumania, where Janet Van Dyne will reconnect with Kang the Conqueror. It appears that Kang 
hasn't wanted to leave the Quantum Realm or hasn't been able to, which means that he has been in prison there for a long time. But if you remember, the villain's statue is shown in the TVA headquarters at the end of Loki, which may give away Kang's escape at the end of Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. The end of Ant-Man's third installment may have already been spoiled, even before its release. Moving on, Feige says Ant-Man 3 is at the peak of MCU. Marvel Studios is also amping up its promotion for Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, as the release date approaches. New Ant-Man 3 footage was unveiled during the CCXP 2022 in Brazil, where new footage was shown to the audience present. And the president of Marvel Studios, Kevin Feige, was there to promote the movie too. Feige had nothing but praise for the Ant-Man cast and explained that he loved the amazing cast that has been with Marvel for the past eight years. Not only had Ant-Man 2 ended Phase 2, but now Ant-Man 3 was beginning Phase 5, and that too in such a major way, he compared the Ant-Man movies to Scott Lang's growth, who started as a petty criminal, and has since moved on to help save the Earth in Avengers Endgame. Feige loved that Ant-Man was now at the peak of the Marvel Universe. The future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe will be heavily influenced by Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, according to Marvel producer Stephen Broussard. In a recent interview with Total Film Magazine, Magazine, Broussard talked about how Ant-Man movies in the past have been referred to as palate cleansers and how with Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, they aim to change this. Since the first two Ant-Man movies always followed Avengers movies, Broussard talked about how they wanted the third Ant-Man movie to stand alone and feel central to the MCU. Coming up, how could Ant-Man 3 be integral to the multiverse saga? Feige pitched Ant-Man 3 as a massive team-up movie similar to Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness back in July 2022, just following Marvel Studios' Hall H presentation at San Diego Comic-Con. Sam Raimi's MCU movie, which paired Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch, served as a kind of small crossover. Given that the narrative of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania appears to exclusively involve characters who have only ever been present in the Ant-Man movies, it's puzzling to see why Feige categorized the film in this way. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness and Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania both feature team-ups in the movies, but they also both play significant roles in the MCU's developing multiverse saga. As was already established, the antagonist of the Avengers, the Kang Dynasty, Kang the Conqueror, will be Team Ant-Man's main opponent. The antagonist will first appear in the third installment, and we'll finally learn more about him since first seeing him almost two years ago. Simply put, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania will surpass its predecessors in scale. Feige's claim that it is the peak of the MCU, though still seems unlikely given the franchise's 14 year runtime. The Avengers and Avengers Endgame were two of the high points of the Infinity Saga, but if Feige's claim is true, Reed's next threequel might serve as the MCU's blueprint as they move forward. Finally, why Ant-Man could be Avengers 5's most important hero. After being unable to appear in Avengers Infinity War, Paul Rudd's Ant-Man stepped up to play a significant role in the group's strategy to defeat Thanos' efforts and restore the universe's snapped people in Endgame. In reality, Scott Lang was the one who first put the idea of time travel forward when he discussed it with Captain America. Director Peyton Reed has already stated Kang will be imprisoned in the Quantum Realm in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. He will use extortion to free himself from the microscopic world, which is what prompts him to enlist Ant-Man's assistance. To protect his family and friends, Ant-Man will probably assist in granting him this freedom, exposing the multiverse to the Avengers' next major threat, and paving the way for the Kang Dynasty. Who knows, though, if Kang will keep his word and actually help Lang and his family out of the Quantum Realm as well? Since he will be the team expert on the subject, Ant-Man may end up being the one to reunite Earth's mightiest heroes and inform them of Kang's threat. The hero might end up taking on a leading role in the movie, joining the three major characters that have already been announced for Avengers 5. So, it doesn't necessarily follow that Ant-Man is no longer at risk from Kang the Conqueror, even though he is sure to survive Quantumania. The time-traveling bad guy might still strike, especially because Paul Rudd will have appeared in the MCU for around 10 years at this point. And that's a wrap for this video. Do you think Ant-Man could still die in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania? Let us know in the comments below. While you're down there, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.